Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation is based on the epistle lesson just read. You will see that the devil delights to watch us sinners make enemies out of one another, but that faith in Christ Jesus equips you with all you need to withstand his every spiritual attack. Again, the apostles' words to the Ephesians, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So far the text, let us pray. Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. I was never a big fan of piñatas as a child, probably because I never got anywhere near hitting the donkey. Blindfolded, spun around to swing a bat wildly into the air? It seemed every other child got a good laugh at your expense in a game where you had a better chance of hitting one of those other children than the actual prize. In many ways, though, the piñata serves as fitting image for the kinds of games we sinners play with one another. You see, the scriptures repeatedly describe us as blind. And the image, the blind leading the blind, presents a bird's eye view of an embarrassing display of children bumping into one another in the dark all in what you and I claim to be navigating our way through life. A game which you might not be a big fan of yourself, but a game which in his concluding thoughts to the church of Ephesus, the Apostle Paul clues you in to the grim perspective that there is one who savors watching each and every round that behind and beneath each of your personal struggles in life is an invisible battle no one can see with the eye. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the wiles of the devil. Earlier in his epistle to the Ephesians, the Apostle highlights the second table of the law, love for neighbor, as the standard of Christian conduct. When he says, speak every man truth with his neighbor, and give to him that needeth. Before going on to detail just what it looks like for us to play nice with one another in every sphere of life, home, work, government, and church. Calling you to honor, love, and obey within the Christian household, within the household of faith, for all in authority, in both workplace and public service. In general, Paul summarizes it this way, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. But upon careful inspection of each of these building blocks of society, home, work, government, and church, it might look more like a piñata game than honor and love, each child stumbling about as one that beateth the air, consistently missing the mark in sin. Each disparaging comment made to your spouse or about your spouse, behind their back or in your head, a wild swing into the air. Arguments with children where you end up acting as childish as they are. Frustrations which make you accuse a co-worker of going about his day as if blindfolded. 
and in the simple effort of getting a job done, leaving a wide assortment of bumps and bruises on any bystander which gets in your path. In all this, the apostle makes clear that each instance you've proven incapable of controlling yourself actually gives place to the devil, welcomes him to the party lest he miss out on the fun. Even when you've had a good laugh at the president's expense, falling off his bike or tripping on the stairs, it's the devil who enjoys the better laugh, watching a Christian conservative fall yet once more flat on his face. The spouse who refuses to agree with you, the neighbor who proves a constant annoyance, government in general, how easily we fool ourselves into thinking that these are our enemies, when according to scripture, no mortal man is the foe you should really fear. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places, places you should be thankful you cannot see, which would make you shudder to give second thought. Spiritually speaking, then, however you have behaved or not in each of these earthly spheres of life concerning the clear command to submit in the fear of God has served as one shameful display after another to the devil's great delight. Delighted to watch us children of Adam hit one another and stumble about nowhere near the goal of eternal life. But knowing this, the pinata fight manner with which you and I go about our days. The Apostle Paul calls you to keep your arms strapped to your side and stand at attention. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. The imagery the Apostle uses here is of the front linemen in a Greek military formation. The complete opposite of a blindfolded goose chase, bat in hand, a defensive guard braced in both stature and equipment to take any blow and hold his position. So covered in armor from head to toe, he can't even move. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That instead of advancing into enemy territory, contrary to any divine order flailing about the field in shameful display, you might stay put right where you are. So covered in armor, you have no other option than to hold the line held fast in the righteousness of Christ. Detailed from head to toe in that righteousness yours as the spoils of victory. When Jesus took on the spiritual conflict no man, no human eye can see that conflict no mere human could win by suffering his way through the devil's favorite game in your place. When Jesus laid to the side every divine protection rightfully his, calling disciples to cast the sword in its sheath and ordering the legions of angels at his beck and command to stand down, that he might go forth to battle clothed in nothing other than the filthy rags of all our unrighteousness. 
to be blindfolded and spun about in order for others to get a good laugh at his expense before stumbling his way to a cross. In the shameful display of Abraham's children using the child born of Mary as a punching bag of sorts, until suspended in the air and poked with a spear, a jackpot of water and blood gushed forth from his side. The devil and the wicked host of hell, ah, they savored each and every second of this cruel game. The Son of God gasping for air in the grasp of death. But what they, in the peak of their depraved blindness, were incapable, incapable of perceiving, is that for you who believe, that water and blood from his riven side which flowed are the sweet treasures of forgiveness and life. For on the third day, Christ arose to the rage and shame of the devil's domain in order to declare a complete end to these cruel games we play with one another by the divine decree, peace be unto you. Yes, the devil, he might get a good belly roll at every wild swing among us mortals. But when the Lord looks down from his throne of grace, he sees you altogether differently. Now wrapped tight in saving righteousness, he sees you, a child finally held in place by the firm grasp of salvation. Put on the whole armor of God. Don't dare move an inch, rather clinging to Christ's victory over sin, death, and hell. Behold how whenever this gospel is proclaimed, the death and resurrection of your Savior replayed for the ear to hear and the mind's eye to tremble in contemplation of God's boundless love for you, that the devil ends up the loser and you the winner every single time. The devils of the world should fill all eager to devour us. We tremble not, we fear no will. They shall not overpower us. You see, there is no such thing as a flesh and blood enemy. Not when the very, very worst any man could do is end your earthly life and send you directly to heaven with Christ. But the devil's constant ploy is to fool you into thinking that your life is riddled with enemies people against you in every sphere of life. As if by peeping out from beneath your blindfold, you can figure things out better than God says in his word. And thus sneak out of your position to take matters into your own hands. Once out of place to fall foolishly on your face by some cheap shot at family or neighbor or an even cheaper target in Washington. All the devil's crafty technique to scare you out of holy fear of God into carnal fear of people in your life. To all this, the apostle says, stand firm, submit, these are military commands to stay put right where you are, to hold the unique position given you in home work, government, and church as divine service in the kingdom of God, to recommit yourself to your part in maintaining a Christian home, whether husband, wife, or child, at work, Refusing to be a busybody, doing the job before you that very moment. And as citizen, to go about your day in upstanding manner, especially 
especially when no one in charge is. Adorned head to toe in a shield in defense of such divine proportion, seized and claimed as Christ through baptism, held in place through every gospel promise, drop that crude bat and take in hand the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Using that sword to swipe to the ground each temptation which dare get in your face. This world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will, but he can harm us none. He's judged. The deed is done. One little word can fill him. Striking down one scare tactic after another. That fear to leave your position and run childlessly about. May you hold the line with him by the good word that Christ Jesus has lived and died for me. Keeping your earthly struggles in this eternal perspective, may you consider any flesh and blood enemy who does cross your path to be mere bystander in a battle against dark powers neither of you can see. And no longer blindfolded, see all things through faith in Christ's victory over sin and hell. Those cruel games among us simply need not be. Put on the whole armor of God. Live out that righteousness yours in Christ Jesus. That standing firm in humility and love, whatever any mere mortal could possibly say or do might bounce right off you and leave the devil looking the fool again and again and again. Now the peace that passeth all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.